Hey friends, every week I'm always so excited to get to go to church with all of my friends. Today, I'm really excited to get to have church with you from wherever you are. You know what? Every day, whenever we have Crosstown, we always like to start with our everyday song. I bet your families are going to really like getting to learn this super fun song we do every week. So everyone get up on your feet and let's sing our everyday song. you're joining us today. Leading up to Easter, we're talking about a few stories that happened the week that Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. Today, we're talking about the story of the Last Supper. And during the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples, he did something that we still do today as a church. He led his disciples in something that we commonly refer to as communion. We're going to talk more about what communion is and why we do it today. It's important to remember that the main reason we take communion is to remember Jesus and what He did for us. It's a time to remind ourselves who Jesus is and who we are now because of Him. And that's why today we're saying every day, I am who Jesus says I am. We're going to start things off by singing a song together, so go ahead, stand up, and sing this out with us as loud as you can. Something to 
sounded so great. Thank you for singing with us. And now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like we said before, we're talking about the story of the Last Supper. So let's check it out. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, Uh, hi. The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. In our story today, Jesus took communion with his disciples. He took the cup and divided it among them. And then he broke bread and passed it to each of them. They ate the bread and drank the cup, and Jesus told them to do this in remembrance of him. And as a church, we still take communion to this day. But why do we do it, and what exactly should we be remembering when we take it? We're going to take some time together to watch a video all about communion and what it is. So let's check it out. Hi, Dot. What you got there? Did you make us some snacks? Hey, Bouncy. I'm reading my favorite story in the Bible. It's when Jesus said goodbye to his disciples right before he was taken to the cross. That sounds like a sad story. Why do you like it so much? I guess it helps me feel connected to those 12 people who Jesus first chose to be his followers. Yeah, I've always wished I could be one of those guys. Well, this story tells about a way we can be just as close to Jesus as they were. It shows one thing we can do to be Jesus' disciples too. Really? But wait, Dot, what does that have to do with snacks? Just let me tell you the story, Bouncy. You'll see. Jesus knew it was almost time for him to die, but it was also time for a very special holiday. Like 
Easter? It was Easter time. It was a feast called the Passover that God's people had celebrated since Moses' time. Jesus wanted to share this meal with his 12 disciples. He planned to show them how to remember him after he was gone, using the wine and bread from the table. The snacks! Is that why you have grape juice and crackers? That's right, Bouncy. Jesus held up a cup, drank it, and said, This is my blood. It's poured out for you. Do this to remember me. He held up the bread, broke it, and took a bite. This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. So all his disciples drank and ate. Um, Dot? Yes, Bouncy? This is a sad story. I don't understand why Jesus would want them to remember such a sad day. Jesus dying for us, giving up his body and his blood for us. That's not a memory I like thinking about. Why didn't Jesus tell them to remember the happy times? They did have lots of happy times. Walking together, telling stories, learning about God, miracles. But none of that matters if it wasn't for what Jesus did on the cross. His blood had to be poured out. His body had to be broken. It is sad in a way, but it's the most wonderful thing God could ever do for us. That brings it all back to us. We can do this to be just like Jesus and his disciples. It's called the Lord's Supper or communion. Dot, you know I'm gonna have to ask what communion means, right? Communion means to share something, to be close together, to be connected. You know, like in a community. When we take communion with grape juice and crackers, we're showing that we remember what Jesus did. Not by just thinking about how his blood was poured out and his body was broken on the cross, but living like that, doing what Jesus did, being broken and poured out too. Whoa, I don't want to die on a cross. Not die how he died, live how he lived. Show that you'll do whatever God says, just like Jesus did. That's how we can have communion with Jesus. That's why we do it. You know I want to live like Jesus. Can we take communion right now? It's really special. It's something your parents will want to be a part of. You should ask them first. Well, Dot, I'm glad we talked about this. I want to be Jesus' disciple, just like those guys in the Bible. Me too, Bouncy. Jesus wants all his followers to share communion with him and with friends like you. When we examine ourselves before taking communion, we should ask ourselves, and answer honestly, if we're living a life that brings honor to the broken body and the blood that Jesus spilled for us. But what does it mean to live a life that brings honor to Jesus? I would encourage you to talk about that with your parents or small group leaders. So that's it for this week, and remember that every day, we are who Jesus says we are. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Wait, we can't go yet. We haven't learned our Bible verse yet. Are you ready? Get your Bibles out. This week, our verse comes from 1 Timothy 3.15. The family of God is the church. Can you repeat that after me? I'll say part, and then you say it right after me. Get your Bibles out, here we go. 1 Timothy 3.15. The family of God is the church. You know what that means? That means the church isn't a building. The church is you and me. That's what we got to do together today. Be the church. I'm gonna leave you with some questions to talk about. See you later.